Gatwick, the busiest single runway airport in the world. 25,000 staff, 120,000 bags a day, 33 million passengers a year. Put your bag on first, put the first one on, that would be good to me. In the past, Gatwick struggled to cope with all the things that can go wrong and do go wrong. Operating an international airport is an unpredictable business. You know, you've got to be on your guard and prepared at all times. But now, Gatwick's under new ownership and undergoing a £1 billion facelift. The aim? To create the best airport in the world. We need to be driving this airport to 45 million passengers uh, off the single runway. Flight controls checked. With new management comes tough talk. We've got to change our business now. We want to remove those failures. There's no accountability, there's no leadership, there's no direction. We don't have time to wait. Put up or shut up. Over the last year, we've been there capturing the highs and the lows as the world's busiest single runway airport gets even busier. Ambulance crew on route, please move to one side. I need to move you around so you're going down this way for us, please. Conflicting views as to where we're supposed to go, huge queues, nowhere to sit down. Fundamentally, something's wrong. It failed, and it's the second time it's failed in a week. You're responsible, yeah? Coming up... Mind your heads. The hidden world of Gatwick's baggage system. Reset down the panel, see what happens. Things grind to a halt at the worst possible time. So I've got manager of one, senior manager of one manager ringing, trying to tell me what to do when they don't really know. Causing chaos on the terminal floor. Right, ladies and gentlemen, I need you to pay attention for me. It's an absolute nightmare. And when some bags don't make it onto the plane... It is somebody's holiday. The system has created hell out of... Someone's got to answer for it. It's important to make sure that we do get passengers on planes, bags on planes. It's like going to a public execution. Only you don't know who's going to get strung up, and you just hope it ain't you. Gatwick processes, on average, 123,000 passenger bags every day, and things don't always go to plan. I've had my bags lost so many times that I never travel with things that um, I don't mind losing. It's sort of the second thing I worry about after getting myself on the plane, whether my luggage is on the plane as well. <laughs> Expecting your baggage to get on a plane and reach its destination is an act of blind faith. I just set it on the scales, that would be great. Thanks. So just what happens after you wave goodbye to your bag at check-in? At Gatwick, your bag goes on a journey stretching up to one and a half kilometres. After passing through stringent security checks and an x-ray, the bag is flipped down to the loading bay, where it's manually scanned by a handling agent. before being placed onto a baggage car and driven out to the airstrip. Where it's finally loaded onto the plane. The South Terminal's 30-year-old baggage belt system is well past its sell-by date. So £200 million is being spent on a completely new one across the entire airport. But that won't be completed until 2015. The current system is prone to breakdowns on a weekly basis. So it's left to the baggage belt engineers to put things right. Mind your heads. These are some of the unsung heroes of the airport, working in difficult conditions, often with poor ventilation in 30 degree heat. Stevie Summers is team leader for five engineers in the South Terminal. Right, let's go then. 
Shake a leg. The first job of tonight's shift is fixing a torn belt. Ooh. As you can see, the joint's completely gone now, so it's not very good. So if something else gets caught in it, that's it, finished. Won't be running. So we'll do it tonight, and then everything's all right. The engineers do 24-7 maintenance work to keep the system running in the cramped and oppressive environment that they call the dungeon, a world away from the terminal upstairs. Some of the other departments that don't have to come down here, they just think the bag magically leaves the desk and magically gets to the dolly and goes on the plane. I don't think they really see that we're crawling around on our hands and knees and extreme heat and sometimes dark. One of Stevie's team is Mark Allen. Today, they're going to do a routine maintenance check. They've worked together for eight years. I had him when we started working together. He's made it all fall out. He's always mean to me. I bully him, apparently. Yeah, because I'm only little. Can you get that one all right? I'm sure that's George. I can't move. No, it's the moans a lot. <laughs> Gatwick is investing a billion pounds in improvements. But there is one persistent complaint. Passengers' bags being delayed or lost. There always seems to be a problem with baggage. I'm always concerned. Always concerned. Because I've lost baggage on so many occasions. With the new kind of technological things, it's uh, unexplainable that they do things. It shouldn't happen. 31-year-old Daniel Connick is a former manager of a cardboard box factory. He's one of a new breed of go-getters that have come to Gatwick. His job is to raise the performance of baggage operations. So, first flight is on 7.45 tomorrow morning is when check-in opens. Uh, we're on shift, nice. I have a fancy flow chart of what to do. The organisation's going to get better, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be an easier life for the employees and it's not all going to be a bed of roses, which, to be honest, I find more satisfying anyway, because I'm sadist, perhaps, but it shouldn't be a cushy job for the boys working here. Daniel is keen to embrace the new culture of improvement at Gatwick and has taken a sense of order to extremes. Some people say I've got a little bit of OCD, but I just like things to be neat and in their place. So I've uh, taped everything out that, that lives here. Tidy workplace, tidy mind. There's a philosophy, actually, that you're supposed to be able to find any bit of information or part within 30 seconds, I think. Don't test me on that. It's 7.30 a.m. at the Ryanair check-in desk, and with passenger numbers at a peak, queuing times are stretching over an hour. Experienced information passenger assistants, Richard Voice and Stuart Bone, have got their hands full dealing with the queues. It's a monarch flight, is it? Yeah. You want to pay all the others are over there. We've obviously got a lot of queuing, a lot of passengers with different issues going on, and we're just trying to get on top of it and... On top of who? Each other. Oh. And then we'll, we'll be fine, so, yeah, be good. You have a pick blockage check-in in line six. That is going down all the way up to check-in. Oh, we're here for that. There's been a blockage at one of the busiest checking bells. Stuart puts out a call for a baggage engineer, and Mark is someone from the dungeons. While the belt remains out of action, the queue of frustrated passengers begins to grow. If you're looking at full flights, you could be looking at anywhere between 180 to 350 people per flight. We've got four to five flights all going out within the next two hours. You could be looking at in excess of 2,500 people there. If they've all got a bag to two bags each and they're all banging themselves through the belts, something's going to get caught up, something's going to happen. Back jam here. It's a common fault. A bag has got stuck because it's been loaded incorrectly on its wheels rather than lying flat. But even a simple fault like this becomes the responsibility of the engineers. 
can go back downstairs now. The girl will start on the desk, don't realise the implications of putting bags down on wheels. You know, channel announcements to go out that sorry about the baggage belt failure. There's no baggage belt failure. It's bag that's, the bag's been put on incorrectly in the storeroom. But there you go. It's part of the job. With a billion pounds being spent on transformation, Gatwick is going through radical change. Have you got boarding pass? Uh, that should be it. Yeah, that's it. But at the British Airways check-in desk, one thing remains the same. Passengers with overweight bags. Can you get a tiny little bit out? Just a, a, wee, a little bit. Jackie Philby and Shirley Wilkins Two of BA's long-standing check-in ladies are dealing with passengers flying to Kingston, Jamaica. Are you all together? Yeah. Between them, they've worked at Gatwick for 30 years and are veterans at dealing with passengers trying to check in bags over BA's severely reduced weight limit of 23 kilograms. They used to be allowed 64 kilos, two cases at um, 32 each. So it is a bit of a shock to them now because they're only allowed one bag at 23. So they do have excess baggage all the time, and now they have to pay for the extra bag. OK, that one is 30. So you get a heavy bag charge, £70. Pick something up. Pick okay. something up. Can you get five kilos out and take it as hand luggage? OK. Yeah. Thank you, darling. Thanks, Seven. Good to know. I'll ask you before. Yes, but I can I put a lock on that bus? How much is it now? Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to hand luggage. Have you got room in your hand luggage? Yeah, I'm yeah. going to stuff them in there. <laughs> Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs> Because Kingston, for some reason, unlike any of the other Caribbean destinations, a lot of them are going home. So. And that's why their cases are so full, they're taking yeah. back presents. Dried fish. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. Lots and lots of clothes. They, they're clothes. Designer. Clothes clothes. Yeah. <laughs> Dried fish and designer clothes. <laughs> Over in the South Terminal, engineers Stevie and Mark are back to work patching up the old and unreliable baggage belt system. To try and keep his team of engineers motivated, new manager Daniel Connick has some innovative ideas about how to work more efficiently. This is to share with you, right, where I'm coming from. Having a zero defect <laughs> mentality. <laughs> Stay with me, it's stay with me. Oh, you, well, stay awake. Right, that's it. Daniel has a big task engaging his sceptical team. And the building works going on outside aren't helping. Uh, I'm going to talk about the iceberg of defects, right? Here's, on the tip. Let, let, let stop, me, stop me if I go too patronising. So, here's an iceberg, right? And in this, this is the iceberg of defects, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, These are all, this is <laughs> this is a bit of kit and it could be anything, right? But in this case, it's a conveyor system. The assets we look after. Now, when a when a defect comes above the water, it becomes a problem that then makes that asset um, go out of service. For example, a belt tearing or something like that. All these little faults, are like loose nuts and bolts, tiny little defects, a ripping a belt. Anything that makes it look different to how it came out of the That's factory. That's going to affect passengers' bag. What I'm trying to do is get us to address, instead of waiting for it to become a problem and fixing it, let's address all of them. And ultimately, in the long term, it saves time and it reduces the amount of big defects. So that's where I'm coming from. That's very good. He left out the South Terminal Engineering being the Titanic about to run aground <laughs> on the iceberg. No, we are. That's why we're trying to stop it. <laughs> I just constantly try and get what's in my head out so that everybody can understand where I'm coming from. Um, I hope it helped a little bit. Um, I'm aware there's always the, the odd snigger and sarcastic comment, but I'm thick-skinned. 
the trick is not to bite to any of it. Otherwise, that's, that's taken as encouragement. <laughs> Don't let it smell blood or fear. <laughs> but it's just this way of thinking that the new owners are keen for Gatwick employees to adopt, from the head office down to the frontline staff. Daniel's got quite a few ideas, actually. He's got quite a few ideas in Dan's world. Um, yeah, well, we're, we're trying to... We're trying to sort of adapt to different ideas. It's what you have to do, really, isn't it? You've got a new company, you've got a new way forward. You can't be stuck in the past. But some of the older members of the baggage team are finding it more difficult to embrace the new ways. I go down into the dungeon, and I'm quite happy, because it, it's... Um, down here, everything is as it was 10 or 15 years ago. Eamon joined Gatwick in 1973 as a porter and worked his way up through the organisation. <laughs> 38 years and counting. I've been here. 38 years? You started seven years before I was born, Eamon. Quite impressive. Six month contracts. I'm frightened to say anything in case they realise I'm still here. Good morning, MBO. For the last 11 years, Eamon has been manager of baggage operations, in charge of smooth relations between terminal staff upstairs and engineers downstairs. Good morning, MBO. On any failure, I can get up to 30 fungals. I've got all these senior managers and all of the handling agents are all got their ramp managers and operations managers, and then there's me. Eamon's role includes regular checks on the system to spot any potential blockages. One of the most common problems occurs when straps aren't secured to a bag and get torn off by the rickety old baggage line. All along here, these straps are caught on the system. And when you consider, if nothing else, the cost of all these suitcases, and, and obviously, the upset passenger. Sometimes it's not just straps that get caught in the conveyors. What do you think? Yeah? No? <laughs> this is what my baggage system can do to it. I would surmise that it's falling off the trays and it'll get stuck in the framework of the baggage system. I mean, it's such a shame because it is somebody's holiday. And obviously, what your the system has created hell out of. It's the May Bank holiday, and with 8,000 passengers' bags to process every hour, it's the worst possible time for the baggage belt system to break down. We appear to uh, be out of service at the moment. Do we know what's going on? Keep moving, please. If you can't get through at the end, go over to the other side and come round, please. But under the terminal floor, a problem has occurred. You want to go and just reset the panel, see what happens? The EasyJet line is one of the oldest at Gatwick. Last night, as part of routine maintenance, a new motor was fitted, and since then, the belt can't be started. EasyJet has the busiest line in Gatwick, with thousands of bags passing through it every day. Hey, it's so it's a serious problem downstairs for engineering team leader Stevie. Manager of one, senior manager of one manager ringing and trying to tell me what to do when they don't really know. If I get this to work, I'll sit down with you and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll try and pick the bones out of it in a good way. Upstairs, the queues of passengers are swelling out of control. In a desperate attempt to get the piles of bags to the plane on time, they have to be rushed to another line. Right, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I need you to pay attention to me. I need to move you around so you're going down this way for us, please. 
Information passenger assistant Richard Boyce is trying to keep the situation under control. Keep moving down for me, please. Join the back of the queue. It's an absolute nightmare because it will hold up a lot of stuff. Plus, you've got other airlines checking in. It can get quite fraught when you have um, baggage belt outages. Conflicting views as to where we're supposed to go. Huge queues, nowhere to sit down. It's been several hours since the EasyJet baggage line went out of service because of a fault with the conveyor belt. Where are you going to, my love? You're on the other side, zone J, left hand side there, my love, OK? And the mood at the EasyJet check-in area is becoming increasingly desperate. Down below, engineers Stevie and Mark are under relentless pressure from management to fix the so far untraceable electrical problem. It's our busiest line, and it's caused major impacts, obviously, on the flights at the moment, so we've been having our bosses ring up, so they get text alerts that lines are down, and because it's been down, well, it's been down all night, which is an incredibly long time for it. Over a thousand passengers' bags have to be transported to different belts, which means there's work to do for information passenger assistant Chris Marshall. All right, sir. We have to separate all the bags by their um, flights and then um, send them down another baggage belt. The more, more bags going down, the more chances there are of something going wrong. Now you'll personally make sure that gets to the right plane. Oh yeah, I'll personally take it to the plane. <laughs> Thank you. Gatwick experiences baggage belt problems on an almost daily basis. The biggest concern is bags not making the flight. These are known as short-shipped bags, which are a serious problem for head of terminals Marcus Stanton. When we do have a baggage breakdown, we need to get onto it straight away. Every minute counts. Potentially, it means that we have what we call short-ship bags, which are bags that are left here at Gatwick, and they miss the flight, and then they get sent out on the next flight. Not a great experience for the passenger. Downstairs in the dungeon, Stevie and Mark suspect that the cause of the problem might be a brand new machine part that's faulty. No, it's running all right at the moment, so I don't know whether we're testing for some bags. We can expect new stuff to not work, but we're going to work this is what we have to part with. Hopefully, my fingers crossed, we'll be all right. And we'll be running. And we can relax for a little while. Not for long. Finally, Stevie and the team managed to get the belt running again. The EasyJet line has been out of action for hours, but thankfully, no bags missed their flight. The routine maintenance turned into a bit of a nightmare, but there you go. That's what happens when you're trying to be proactive, sometimes it goes wrong. But sort it out now. It was a bit manic because there's everyone and his dog phoning up, senior management, EasyJet. Sometimes you're wanting to say things you're probably not allowed to, but you have to remember that, you know, you're not allowed to do that, really. Yeah, go, sir. Are you airside land side? Currently land side. Marvellous. I have an unattended on arrival. In the South Terminal, information passenger assistant Richard Voice gets an emergency call to investigate an unattended bag. Called in by the police and a police officer. Where is it? The bag in question has been hidden away in a corner of the terminal. What's it doing down there? A bit dodgy, isn't it? Uh, we've located the, the bag. I'm just going to check it now. <laughs> Thankfully, the only items in the bag are some old pillows. Now, this is really how inconsiderate people are, though. Central packs, too. We've got some items that have been left unattended that just need disposing of. I'll get this. Oh, sorry, sorry mate. Oh, sorry, mate. <laughs> In 2010, there were over 3,500 incidents of unattended bags. Sometimes it's people that have nipped off to the toilet and just thought they'd leave the bag there. Sometimes people genuinely forget their bags. 
sometimes people just, they've got too much luggage, they've got excess baggage. They don't know where to put the bag they want to get rid of, so they just leave it in the middle of the floor or by a bin. So, yeah, it can be varying reasons why people do it. It's a bit unusual, really. Um, I can never understand how you can forget your stuff. Just, that, that's a bit that always confuses me, but some people obviously do. That's one. Lost luggage is dealt with by a company within Gatwick called Excess Baggage. They receive about 100 items per day. Another toilet bag, small umbrella. It's the job of Ray Molden to store the staggering variety of items. I think if you're not a seasoned traveller, an airport can be a very daunting place. People get all flustered and that, and uh, get outside and find they've lost a bag. If you look through here, there's basically the same amount of phones every three days. What's in there? 20 in three days.